What's happening achievers? Ajit Sidhu here from Invincible Achievers. Let's talk about leadership and leadership qualities. Now there's two parts of leadership. One is the science of leadership and many people go to university to learn about how to be, become a leader and the, and, the, and, and the procedures that you would need to have to be able to implement the leadership qualities. But today I want to talk about the art. Now the art of leadership. There's so many people that I see when it comes to interviews and just generally in life that I say, yeah, you've, you've got a degree in leadership, but do you have what it takes? And maybe you, you've heard this. Um, there's a program at the moment, me and my wife are watching SAS. Um, uh, it comes on Sundays. It's amazing where uh, a group of people are brought together uh, and they have to go through the process of the SAS training to push the mindset and the body continuously. And, and they don't get any sleep. They're pushed and pushed and pushed and put into situations where people are firing guns at them, uh, paintball guns. And these guys are really experienced. And it's really motivational, motivational program. But you get to see who the actual leaders are and who, have, who has the art of leadership from this program because when the going gets tough the tough don't get going they rise up to the challenge and stand up and direct and that's the difference between the science and art now the art is the art the art of leadership comes through experience now there's too many people that that don't want to get the experience anymore they want to do, they want to be like the beasts of the past, the beasts of the now. But when it's time to do what beasts actually do, they quiver and they hide. Oh, it's not me. Oh, I need to go home. Oh, I can't do this. Ugh. And they fall. But that's where experience is required. And when it comes to many interviews that I've done, nobody's willing to have the experience. And I see these CVs and they come in and they look, they want a leadership position. And when questioned, okay, so what experience have you got? Yeah, I worked one month over there. I worked one month over here. I worked one month. And that is not enough time to get the experience. There's a, a guy that you probably all, all heard of, uh, Napoleon Hill. He wrote the book, Rich De uh, sorry, um, Think and Grow Rich, and he worked for Carnegie. And it was a time when Car Carnegie was one of the wealthiest men um, at that time, and Napoleon Hill, he wanted to become famous. He wanted to help people. He wanted to, he wanted to become rich, but he also wanted to help people. And so Carnegie, Carnegie gave him the option. He said, if you want to do this, you want this goal, you're gonna to have to work for me for 20 years without pay. 20 years without any income. You're gonna to have to fund yourself, you're gonna to have to do everything yourself, but I will introduce you to some of the wealthiest men in the world. And you can interview them, you can learn how they, they you can learn their experiences and you can learn their mindset. And he did have a tough time to, he had one day, and Carnegie, I believe Carnegie gave him one day to, uh, come up with an answer and so he did have the whole should I do it should I not uh, 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 but then he decided to do it and he did it and he walked down that path for 20 years interviewing all the greats of that time and then he brought the book out think and grow rich it's an amazing book you should read it it's awesome so much information in there but he did it for free to gain the experience to gain the knowledge Nowadays, when you ask someone to do something, they say, how much are you gonna pay me? Not even for an hour. It's all about pay me first, and then I will do it. And they're not even, they, they don't, nobody wants experience. There was a, there's a story um, of Robert, Kawas Robert Kawasaki, um, the writer of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. When he was young, he used to work for his rich dad um, in his shop, and at that time, he was, he was getting something, I can't remember the, the figures, but say if he, he was getting $1 uh, 
um, he was getting one dollar and his poor dad, who was his real dad at home, who was a teacher, he said, that's not enough money. You should be, you should be getting more money. You should ask for a raise. This is how it's done in this work environment. So he, Robert Kawasaki, Robert went up to his uh, rich dad and he was very young at that time. He went up to his rich dad and said, uh, dad, can I have a raise? Because this is how it's done. And my dad says, I, I'm worthy of it. And he looked, the father looked at him, the, 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 the rich dad looked at him and he said, so that's great. Thank you for coming up with that. And now I'm gonna get you to work for free. Robert was baffled. He was, he wanted a raise and now he's been cut of all money. And so when he told his poor dad, his poor dad was fuming, uh, his real dad, and the reason why he called him poor dad is because he worked for the government and the government cut his job and he lost his money. He didn't, he didn't make it as well. Whereas the rich dad, his friend's dad in Hawaii, they call everyone uh, like dad and brothers and stuff. So that was rich dad and rich dad had a huge business and he was working for himself. And so when he spoke to his, his um, the poor dad, his dad was fuming. He's like, you should go in and speak to him. So Robert the next day went to his rich dad and said, why did you do that? And the father, the, the rich dad said, you came up and you wanted to work for the money. You wanted the money, the coin. If I had given you the raise, you would have been working for the money, not the experience. But now I've taken it away. Now you're going to work for the experience and you're going to learn and you're going to do it, not for the money because you're gonna to want to do it for a higher purpose. And he did. And then he wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So from that, he, you need to gain experience. Experience is the key. Once you gained experience, gain experience however you can. If you, even if you have to do it for free, just get the experience because what, that experience is always gonna stay with you. It's always gonna stay with you. You need to get that experience. But when you're having that experience, what you want to be looking at, and this is what uh, the owners, when they're hiring someone, they all look at this. And these are the leadership qualities of art. How do you deal with a situation? When a situation arises, how do you deal with it? Now, how is not like, okay, we need to do the X, Y, and Z. It's how you deal with it, with your mind. How do you actually, do you start panicking and running? Oh my gosh, it's, it's too bad, oh, I can't deal with this. <laughs> or do you think, hmm, there's a situation here, we can solve it. I just need to find out the question on how to solve it, and the right question, and the answer will come out by itself. Do you stay calm? Do you put calmness in everyone around you? Because if you are calm and everyone's panicking, they will turn around and say, whoa, that guy knows something that we don't, or that girl knows something that we don't, so let's follow them. This is the exact thing that happened with um, Columbus, I don't believe it's Columbus, it's just straight off my head. Um, who, they used to think that the world was flat in the olden days, and he was the only one, um, he was the only one that said, I'm going to prove that there is land elsewhere and I'm going to, he went to the queen and, and said, I need some funds to be able to sail to the edge because I believe the world is round, please give me the money. He was able to influence the queen to give the money, but not only that, he was able to influence a team of men to join his mission to prove that the world's round. Now, if you believe that the world is flat and you're sailing, to your death, why would you jump on a boat with a crazy dude? Anyway, they're cruising along on the, on the sea and the men all start panicking. They start saying, oh my God, we, we're about to get to the edge. What have we done? This person conned us, he'd convinced us. Oh, let's get him, everyone, let's get him and throw him off the ship. And they're all banded up together and start walking, marching up to, to him and all of a sudden, one of them said, whoa, 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 just relax. Just stop, wait. He's the only one that's certain that we're gonna find land. If we throw him off the boat, there's no one here that's, good, that's certain enough. So we gotta keep following him. See, that was the key. He was certain. 
He had certainty in him and he was able to share that certainty with others, even when they were all panicking, thinking they're going to die. They had to stop and say, that person knows something that we don't, so let's follow him. That made him the leader. So that's something that, that, that's the art. It's being certain, not panicking. It's all about staying calm, thinking every single angle, because if you are in a poor state, and I've done, done a, uh, a video previously if you, on this, if you are in a poor state, you're gonna make poor decisions. When things happen, you need to raise your state. You need to, you need to become a higher state than everyone else in positivity and then make decisions fast. Know how to solve the problem fast and efficiently. And even if you don't know how to solve it, make a decision because that's the biggest thing that stops the flow of work, the flow of life, the flow of everything is making a decision. It's, it, making a decision is the roadblock that stops you from achieving the end goal to get into your destination. Make a decision. You need to just make a decision. Even if you think it wrong, because you won't know until you've made the decision. And if it's wrong, you can change it. Say, guys, that was a wrong decision. Let's regroup and let's go this way. Boom, straight. Rather than stand there saying, which way do we go? Do we go this way? Do we go that way? Do we go this way? Do we go that way? This way, that way. Sun goes down. The moon comes up this way, that way, the wolves come out and they eat you. Make a decision on where to go immediately and get the job done. Get the job done fast and productive. Anything you want to do, if it's in parenting, make a decision. The children are looking at you to make a decision. You can't be thinking, uh, ch children, what would you like to do today? Uh, should we just... You guys make a decision. I want you guys to be independent. It doesn't work like that. Not until they're older. You have to teach them. The way the children learn is by seeing and modeling. You need to be saying, okay, we've got one or two, like my son today. Yeah, my, just a quick, I'm going, I'm going off, off, off what I want to talk about. But my son today, he said to me, won't you collect me, daddy? Can you bring me uh, uh, biscuits? And I went, no, you're not gonna get biscuits, son. It's bad for you, number one. Number two, uh, no. And he said, no, please, biscuit, biscuit. And he's, he's like three and a half, almost four. He's biscuit, biscuit. I want two biscuits, two biscuits. I said, okay, listen, I'm gonna give you one biscuit. One biscuit. I'll get you one biscuit. Just keep it a secret, don't tell anyone. No, daddy, I want two. No, 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 I want three. I said, son, you've got an option. You've got an option of either having one or zero. Which one are you gonna have? He said, I have one. Bam, decision done. He's gonna have one. You getting this? Make a decision, make it fast. But teach. Don't let people run riot, because just like children, they will keep taking. I want two, no, I want three, I want four, I want five. You gotta both, boom, straight up. You either have one or zero, which one's gonna be? So that was just a side note about leadership, because leadership is vital when it comes to parenting. Children go uh, astray if we're not strong leaders. So this is very, very important when it comes to experience. Experience as much as possible because you're gonna be using this in every aspect of your life from friendships to lead, to be parenting, to family, to business, to work. Even if, you, if you're at work and you've got a job and all of a sudden you start leading a team, come on guys, we can do this. Someone's watching you. They're gonna say, whoa, whoa, whoa that person's leading a team. Do it for free. Do it for free and add value to the company. Do that for free. Wherever you are at this moment, go to work today or tomorrow, whenever you heard this, thinking I'm gonna add so much value and I'm going to start leading, I'm going to gain more experience for free. Just do it for free. And just watch, just watch what happens. Because when someone starts doing for free, and trust me guys, I'm a director, I'm an owner of businesses, when someone's doing stuff for free, the eyeballs of the owner goes from there to who's that person? And all of a sudden, you will start flashing in front of the person. When it comes to promotion time, who's gonna get it? Everyone's gonna be interviewed. 
But trust me, the owner is going to say, I'm going to interview everyone, but get that person to interview. Get that person to interview. I want to know. Because you've already proved yourself. You've already proved yourself. It's like a story about this boy that wanted to work at this store. And he saw this store and he thought, I so want it. And so many people were going for interviews at this uh, clothes store. You get so many benefits if you're working there. And it was so tough to get in there. And there was interview process, interview process. And so many people wanted to work there. And it was only one person that was going to get hired. And it was a one week process of interviews. And so what he did was he didn't line up or apply. He went in and said, excuse me, I see you guys need some help over there. Do you mind if I just start folding some clothes for free? And the manager said, well, are you nuts? And he, he said, no, I just feel like doing it. You know, I'm, I've got some free time. I'm quite good at that. It's for free. I, you know, I'll just, I'll just do it for, don't worry about it. I'll do it. And he started doing it. The manager's eyeballs went from to all the interviews to what this guy was doing. Bam, bam, bam. And he was doing it good. He was doing it real good. Boom, 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 boom. Putting it all out. Interviews were happening in that room over there. This boy was doing it for free. Next day, the boy comes back and he goes, you mind if I do it again? I enjoyed it so much. Can I do it? And people are like, yeah, do it. Free work, <laughs> less for us. Boom, 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 boom. Putting it all out, doing it, swept the floors. He said, thanks a lot, <laughs> see you later. As he gets to the door, the manager goes, oh, whoa, 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 come back here. Um, do you want a job? And the boy went, yeah, I do. Interview process finished, the boy got the job. You getting this? Secrets to life. Okay, so just to recap quickly, the art of leadership is experience. Gain experience fast, gain it for free if you need to. Do it for free to gain it. Don't go looking around to say, oh, can I do it? And I know there's m many people out there that might be saying, oh, I need the money working. Weekends, do a Saturday job for free if you need to. Oh, but that's not cool. But you're gaining experience. You're gaining the knowledge. Do it for free. State of mind. Control the state of mind. Learn how to be in a peak state. Whenever situations arise that requires you to be calm and assertive whilst everyone's panicking, that's when you make decisions. Make decisions fast. And everyone will start following you saying, this person knows. And the third part to this is self-reflection. Like I said, you might make a decision that's wrong. And then you say, well, guys, go back. Let's go this way. Afterwards, reflect. See how you could have done it better. Because that's programming your brain to be much better, to do much better. I'm just going to finish off with uh, something my son asked me. My, other son, my elder son, who's seven. He said, what, dad, he, he came up to me and he said, uh, I, was, I was in the, my living room and he said, dad, what's the secret to wealth? And I looked at him, I said, why do you ask? And he said, I, I, I would just like to know. I said, well, uh, and I started thinking, I thought, secret to wealth? Is he talking about money? Is he talking about health? Is he talking about relationship? Is, oh, how do I, and this is all going through my head in seconds because what, he didn't say, what's the secret to money? He said, what's the secret to wealth? And wealth is defined as everything, relationships, family life. And I said, okay. And I want to hit every avenue. I said, son, listen up. This is the secret. This is the absolute secret. I said, learn as much as you can. Experience as much as you can. Apply as much as you can. And when you've learned and had experience and applied and you know how to do it, then teach as much as you can to others. Because the one who can solve the most problems is deserving of the wealthiest life. And my son, he looked at me and he, he nodded, he smiled, he said, he leaned over and said, Dad, I love you, but you do realize I'm seven. You're weird. And he walked off. 
I'm sure one day he will come and look at this, watch this video. Uh, the secret's right there for you, son. <laughs> but guys, keep adding value to people's lives. Keep spreading the love. Become leaders because this world needs leaders because leaders will change the world. And we are just one idea from doing that. Take care, guys.